overheating, camera focus, and terrible durability. Yeah, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has some problems. Now the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been in the news a lot lately and apparently it's for all the wrong reasons. There have been many people that have said that their unit has come with many different problems and even though I haven't encountered every single problem that many people have faced, I will say that I've had my fair share of gripes with it. Now starting with the problems that I've had, my main issue with the 15 Pro Max is that just like last year's 14 Pro series, it has some real focusing issues. Now I shoot my videos on my channel with my iPhone and when I'm shooting a video, the recording is fine, but once I try to shoot the side of a phone or anything that seems too hard for the 15 Pro Max to focus on, it literally cannot focus on it at all, which isn't a problem that I've had when I use my iPhone 12 Pro to record. Now the next issue that many people have had with the 15 Pro Max is overheating and I have experienced overheating but only to a certain extent. Like whenever I'm in a house gaming on it, I have noticed that my case will get a little hot or if I'm outside and I'm in the shade, it'll get really hot again, which is extremely weird because I have to try to put my phone on my air conditioner whenever I get to the car. But any other time whenever I'm using my 15 Pro Max, it's completely fine and it doesn't really bother me. Now the final problem that I've seen with the 15 Pro Max is durability issues. The very popular content creator, Jerry Rig Everything, did a video where he showed that the 15 Pro Max is extremely vulnerable and also titanium isn't as scratch resistant as stainless steel. Now I just got my phone and I always rock a case unless I'm shooting a video on it, but it's still a major issue, especially since the iPhone is over 1200 bucks. So they're really should be no durability issues. And at the end of the day, I can only speak for myself and what I've experienced. And despite the problems that I've experienced, the 15 Pro Max has been really good. I'm getting good battery life, the display is great, and in my one week review, I still wanted to highlight some of the good things that I've noticed with my 15 Pro Max. Now looking at the battery, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has handled everything very well, especially since I've been racking up as much screen time as I usually do. I've been testing out how my 15 Pro Max lasts with medium to high usage, and during this period, I will be getting about six to seven hours of screen time, and there wasn't one time where I didn't last all day. I never had to use power saving mode since my battery was able to last me all day with no problem, and as long as I got up to six hours of screen time, I could basically use most power heavy apps. A majority of the time I use social media, texting family and friends, watching YouTube videos, and on occasion playing games whenever I got bored. The Pro Max supports 29 watt fast charging, which doesn't sound great on paper but works really good in real life. 75% in 55 minutes was just enough for me. And even though I mostly charge my phone overnight, I still would like to see them improve the wattage since the Galaxy S23 Ultra supports 45 watts. And also speaking of usage, I was never the type of person to save battery. During my time of using my Pro Max, I had 5G on, my brightness is on manual and always medium to high with always on display on. I'm using every power heavy app as much as I can. And again, I never use power saving mode, meaning that if you're someone who mostly charges your phone overnight, you should be good no matter how much you use your phone. USB-C 3.0 has allowed me to use only one charger for all my phones. So that's an added benefit for the 15 Pro Max. And so now that I've taken a look at battery, let's get into the more physical aspect of the phone and that's design and build quality. Now, when it comes to iPhones, I feel like they've always had the best feeling phones when it comes to quality. And despite the overheating issue, when it comes to the soft feel all around, it really doesn't disappoint. The 15 Pro Max has this very rounded frame when you hold it. It complements the hand much more than my 14 Pro Max. And I'm holding my phone for hours on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's weight and rounded corners balance each other out. Also speaking of weight, the 15 Pro Max feels much lighter due to having titanium sides, which is lighter than stainless steel. It weighs in at 221 grams compared to the 14 Pro Max's 240 grams. It feels very premium. And I'm the type of person who likes heavier phones, but it does help when holding it. And now when it comes to aesthetic, the Pro Max has really mastered that Apple clean yet simple type of style. It's very similar to older iPhones, which is great since it always works. And the design is still very minimalistic. Even using it with a case, the iPhone has always had aesthetically nice cases that become the true identity of your iPhone. So you can't go wrong with either. And now looking at display, the 15 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display. That is my favorite in terms of features, quality, and brightness. The pill shaped notch isn't the greatest in terms of spacing when watching videos, but whenever using it regularly, I found the whole aesthetic to be favorable to the old school notch. Everything on the display felt very smooth. I think that the 15 Pro Max mastered the balance between sharpness, accuracy, and the feeling of quality. And as far as durability, the Pro Max has ceramic shield on the display, which is pretty terrible when it comes to scratch resistance. And if you do drop your iPhone, whether it's on wood, concrete, or any other hard surface, it more than likely will scratch up. But besides its shaky durability, it's very sharp, punchy and premium when it comes to colors, but also knows not to overdo it. The brightness is the same as last year's 14 Pro Max, which is good. If you're outside with the 15 Pro Max, it can reach up to 2000 nits of peak brightness. And there are many extremely sunny days where I live and I still didn't feel the need to max it out since the brightness was so good. And arguably my favorite thing about the display was the 120 Hertz refresh rate that Apple calls ProMotion. It complemented iOS so well, and I was very happy that it was able to be fast and smooth at the same time. Watching movies and content on this phone is amazing. The dual speakers creates that immersive experience 
experience when it comes to sound and the speakers are extremely loud with a really good quality. And the last thing that I wanted to touch on when it comes to the display is the array of ways to unlock your phone and there aren't that many but Face ID works well so I really can't complain. I use Face ID at night in rooms with the worst lighting and it was reliable every single time but I'm not gonna lie, picking up your phone to unlock it can get annoying and I'm really mad that they didn't put a fingerprint sensor on it. Now another thing that I wanted to go over was the brand new action button. You can pretty much map it to whatever action or app you want and I usually use it as a simple button for mute and ring but it's pretty nice I guess. I personally like the mute switch better since I knew when my phone was on mute and I didn't really have to press it to know. But besides my opinions on the action button, it worked very well and it's much more useful than the mute switch. Now before I go into the camera, I want to go over some extra problems that I went with with my 15 Pro Max. Now just like last year, Apple decided to not have a SIM card slot in the 15 series and I pretty much hate it. Now as you guys know, I change phones very often. I change between Android and iPhones so it always just helps to pop out my SIM card and put it in a new phone. But the problem is that for some reason, most phone companies aren't even equipped to make this process as smooth as possible. It takes way too long, it'll get a lot of failed tries, and it's just way more complicated than it needs to be. And now the last annoying problem that I still face and I'm very annoyed with on my 15 Pro Max is its camera quality and consistency. Now whenever I'm shooting a video, I often get up close and this is when the 15 Pro Max decides to ruin the quality and completely get rid of the stabilization. I've been dealing with this problem since the 13 Pro Max and I've tried everything to fix it, but it still doesn't go away, which is a real bummer. And now moving on to camera, the 15 Pro Max is pretty much the same as last year. It has a 48 megapixel main camera with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera that is the best in my opinion. And something that I realized is that compared to all the other phones that I've used over the past few years, the iPhone has always been the most realistic in terms of color. The colors are always toned down and you can tell the photos aren't heavily processed. And I can say the same thing about night mode photos. They are very good. I love how it brightens up everything in the phone so that any subject is not only clear to see, but also very clean. The Pro Max's zoom photos are pretty good as well. I've always found the ultra wide photos to be acceptable, but not great. But as you zoom in more, pictures add much more detail, even with the five times zoom. Selfies on the 15 Pro Max were the best in the smartphone market. I love how it handles my skin tone. I love how realistic it looks while adjusting little details. And I've always been a fan of the iPhone selfies, and this time is no different. And now videos on the 15 Pro Max were amazing despite the minor problem that I mentioned earlier. There were many things that caught my attention, but overall, the clean professionalism stood out the most. You can shoot video up to 4K, it looks really good, and even though it takes up more space, I think the quality is so much worth it. The stabilization was solid, pans were smooth along with brightness and contrast, and the sharpening is still really good. And I want to give you guys some random footage that I was able to capture on my 15 Pro Max. And alright you guys, that's it for my review on the iPhone 15 Pro Max after one week. Now it's a really good phone, but if you do run into any of these problems, I will recommend you to return it, try to get another model, or just opt for the 14 Pro Max or 13 Pro Max instead. And let me know down in the comments, what problems have you encountered with the 15 Pro Max? And again, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.